guys, how's it going? We're doing another bucket list movies video. I watched a lot of fantastic movies this month and I'm really excited to share with you what I thought of them. When Alien Covenant came out, I decided to watch all of the Alien movies since I've only seen like bits and pieces here and I know most of the story from pop culture and not by sitting down and watching the movies. So that's kind of what I did. I just crossed off the best ones out of my list and I started, of course, with Alien. And then I watched Aliens and then I watched Prometheus. Somebody told me not to watch this third and the fourth and whatever else comes after that. So watching Alien, the very first one, was an interesting experience because watching it at this age after watching so much from the sci-fi genre, to see kind of where everything started, the mixture of horror and sci-fi and just the fantastic design of this movie that so many others have tried to replicate or imitate throughout the decades, it felt initially a little underwhelming because when you go to the source it just kind of feels very simple but then when you watch it again and understand sort of how revolutionary this movie was the style the unique design of this alien it really blew my mind i was very impressed by it the sound design of alien is just incredible absolutely fantastic not to mention the set designs and the designs of the spaceship and the design of what it appears to be one of the first engineers that we watch, or the body of an engineer. It's not clear in this movie, we just know this because we've watched movies like Prometheus and Alien Covenant. I love that you don't get to see the alien that much, and that makes it all the more scary. And while there are practical filming reasons why they don't show him that much, because obviously it's not going to move the same, or we don't have the special effects needed to make it look incredibly scary, I thought it was a great decision not to show it all the time, and that he just kind of jumps on you, and then you don't really see what happens to the person who's being attacked. It leaves it open for your imagination to see it as scary as you think it could be. Watching immediately Aliens is also fantastic because I feel like they're both better together. If you watch Alien, of course, it's amazing. If you watch Aliens, it's also amazing. But having the contrast of these two movies from like sci-fi horror to a more action-packed movie, it's a great complement of both styles. And I think adding Aliens to this franchise and making it more action-packed and make it more about, you know, guns and attacking the aliens and trying to survive was something that maybe was missing from the first one, but since you get it right after, it just makes it all the better. Anyway, I really, really enjoyed them. I'm glad I watched them and I'm glad I got to see Sigourney Weaver kicking some ass because that was fantastic. The next movie I saw is an 80s classic and that is The Terminator, written and directed by James Cameron. I saw it a very long time ago when I was little, but I was so scared by the actual Terminator and the skull and the red eyes. And my worry was that it wasn't going to be as good as Judgment Day, and I think a lot of people agree that the sequel is a lot better. But I have to say The Terminator is really, really good. It does feel a little outdated now. And there's parts where The Terminator is actually walking and you see like still animation and a part where he's like fixing his eye and it clearly looks like it's not the actor. But you can bypass all of that. It doesn't really matter. The story's really good. And I actually really like seeing Sarah Connor before we know her as this badass chick who is predicting the apocalypse and she is the mother of the savior of humanity. It was really cool seeing her as a normal chick who meets Kyle Reese and he kind of like slowly explains explains to her what's going on and who she's supposed to be. And even though she doesn't believe she's meant for all of these things and she is going to have a son who will eventually save humanity, it's really cool to see her go through that process and that evolution. I think she's a wonderful character. I think everybody loves her in Judgment Day, so it was really nice to see her sort of progressing and surviving this killing machine. The next movie I saw was nominated for a bunch of Oscars. The movie is called The Beast of the Southern Wild. I was really interested in watching this movie because I remember the little girl who plays Hush Puppy was actually nominated for an Oscar and I was just very interested in what the story was and why this young girl had to be so strong and what was she facing. It's a little hard to explain this movie. It's somewhere between the fantasy genre and like the drama genre. It's a little confusing in my opinion. So basically the story is of this young girl named Hush Puppy who lives with her alcoholic father in a bayou community. They're being forced to leave this place for many reasons but but when Hush Puppy's father becomes ill, at the same time the ice caps begin to melt and these ancient creatures are roaming the earth and they're threatening their survival and their community. So it's up to Hush Puppy to save the place where they live, to gain some courage and some strength to be on her own when her father is ill, and possibly learn how to be on her own. The movie is strange because I expected it to be more on the fantasy side of things and that's sort of very small and it's almost like a metaphor for something else. So it's not this crazy, fantastic, fantasy land kind of movie, which is kind of what I was expecting. I was expecting more magic to be part of their reality. But that's not the case. It's most about environmental changes. It's most about their community and how 
they don't want to join the rest of civilization, they're very happy where they are, but that's not necessarily what civilization wants or needs from them. And it's all through Hush Puppy's perspective. She's a very young child and her father is everything to her, and he's kind of a aggressive, difficult father, but he does everything because he loves her and he wants her to be tough. He wants her to be able to survive if he's not going to be around. So in many ways, the movie is incredibly sentimental and emotional and there's a sense of wanting and of needing certain people you love around you, but just because you can't see them does not mean that they're not there or they're not part of everything. And I think that was a wonderful message of this movie. Hush Puppy is constantly remembering her mom and she's never really shown, only through certain memories, but there's a sense that she's part of nature and she's always with Hush Puppy and that was really touching. It's sort of her need to become an adult, to become independent and how do you let go of your childhood and face all of these adult things and how can you possibly ever become ready? I do recommend it. I thought it was lovely. I think the girl did an amazing job and it's definitely very different from things you see currently all the time. The next movie I saw is called The Unbearable Lightness of Bean and is named after the adaptation of the novel with the same name. What did I just say? And the movie stars Daniel Day-Lewis looking like a child. He's so young. And Juliette Binoche. Now the movie was filmed in the year that I was born and it's super unfair because Juliette Binoche looks exactly the same as she does now and that's not fair. Like. How are we supposed to top that? It's not possible. The movie is about a Czech doctor, played by Daniel Day-Lewis, who lives in Prague, and he has a very complicated relationship with two women, his wife and his lover. And it sort of explores politics, it explores loves, it explores the lightness of freedom of being whatever you want to be with no commitment, while the Soviet Union is preparing to invade Prague in 1968. It's a very interesting movie because it has a bit of everything. It's incredibly sexy, it is romantic, it is dramatic, it has a historical touch of war and invasion, and sort of how things change during times of war and life cannot be as light or as free as you want it to be, but the one thing we are free to do is choose who we love and when. And it kind of focuses on the strange dynamic of affairs and love and betrayal. And Daniel Day-Lewis represents kind of the very free and kind of carefree way of life. And while he never necessarily wanted to get married, he does get married to Teresa, who's played by Juliette Binoche, but keeps his lover on the side. And his lover represents pretty much that incredibly wild and free life that everybody's drawn to, but you can't really maintain. And Teresa, Juliette Binoche's character, is kind of the opposite of these other two. She's very sentimental, she's very driven by her emotions, and gets attached to people, and she can't just discard people because she wants to or because it's not convenient for her. In that sense, she's very selfless, and maybe not necessarily a great match with her husband. The movie is very interesting and also, as I said, it's very sexy, especially in scenes where there's not a lot of dialogue but there's a lot of body communication. And I'm not talking about sex, there's just different things that happen. There's a scene where Julia Binoche's character photographs her husband's lover. It's like they both know that they're in love with the same man and they're not competing but there's like an assessment of each other. It's very interesting and it's very, I don't know, provocative. I will say like many people's complaint, the movie is too long. It's almost three hours and I honestly don't find it necessary. I think there are things that could have been sped along and could have maybe made it feel like it was moving at a much steadier pace. I thought it was actually very good. It might be actually a better book than a movie, but if you've read it, let me know. Now the last movie I saw in the past month is Hitchcock's Psycho and everybody has been telling me that once I see Psycho, I'm gonna change my opinion about Hitchcock. Well, Hitchcock fans, I'm here to tell you that this is completely true, you win. I regret anything I ever said about Hitchcock or finding him like not that great. This movie was incredible. It's one of those movies that you think you're gonna know how you're gonna react to it because you know so much because of pop culture, because you know about Hitchcock, you know the story of Norman Bates, but then you watch the movie and it's just so engaging. It's so interesting. So in case you don't know what Psycho is about, and I think I was maybe the only one who didn't know 100% what it was about, Psycho is the story of this secretary who steals $40,000 to go and be with her lover. Now in the process of driving up to her lover, she stops at a motel where a young man is running it, but he's kind of under the thumb of his very crazy mother. That's putting it lightly. I think Anthony Perkins' performance as Norman Bates is one of the best things I've seen in movies in my entire life. It's such a freaking complex 
character. And Anthony Perkins does it so well with his like little nuances and little body movements and just being like a really sweet guy but then he flips it on you and he becomes very serious and he doesn't have to yell or shout or get like visibly angry for you to know that you might be in danger. It's amazing. There's so many great things about this movie. The way that Hitchcock handled the camera in scenes that are meant to be scary and scenes that are meant to be about voyeurism. It's excellent. I can't like praise this movie enough. We will be here all day. If you would like to hear me talking more about it, I did a podcast with my friends called Now Conspiring and we did an episode about like classic movies that we watched and I talk about Psycho there. If you remember our last bucket list video, I tell Sam like, are you happy now? I watched Psycho. Well, he's in that episode as well and you can listen to him talk about it because he loves that movie and we just talked for a really long time about it. So if you want to hear about that, I'm going to leave a link in the description box down below or somewhere around here as well. So you can go hear that and let me know what you think. So, guys, those are all the movies I've watched in the past month or so. I think it was a much more successful month than the last. I don't have my jar here in Amsterdam to pick the movies, but I know you can count on me talking about Schindler's List, American History X. There's a couple of more I've seen. If not, I'll let you know on Twitter or on Facebook. You can find me if you look for a Cine Club channel. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching this. I hope you liked this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. You know that is always appreciated. And I will see you on our next movie date. Bye!